So make sure you have both these books on hand all the time, Cooking Around the World with Chef Des and The Best in Your Kitchen. I really appreciate your support if you can do that. You can always order from my website or from Amazon worldwide. Hey, send it as a gift to somebody. That'd be great. You can send it anywhere in the world. Let's get busy, folks. We're going to do the tzatziki. We're going to get that in the fridge, let all the flavors marry up together. Here we go. Get some yogurt on hand, any yogurt. Here's the thing that I have a problem with, with recipes for tzatziki, homemade tzatziki. You'll see this on TV, you'll see on the internet, stuff like that, where people will tell you to take a colander and line it with cheesecloth, and then you put yogurt in there and you let it drain for 24 hours to get rid of the moisture. Well, what a load of malarkey. Oh my goodness, you're going to waste 24 hours of your life to make tzatziki? No wonder people buy it from the store pre-made. It's ludicrous because the next step, what they tell you to do is they tell you to get a cucumber and grate it and then add it to that drained yogurt. You know how much liquid's in this cucumber? So you're going to take 24 hours of your life, drain the yogurt, and then you're going to put all the liquid from this back into it. <sighs> You're better off going outside and bang your head against the wall. It makes no <laughs> sense at all. So I want you to do it my way instead. I'm going to show you a better way, okay? So everybody grab your cucumber. Don't do anything with it just yet. I want you to grab a grater, like a standard cheese grater. And we're going to grate it into a bowl. Now, normally when you're going to attack, <laughs> hopefully you don't attack cucumbers very often, but if you're going to attack a cucumber, the first thing you do is cut off the two ends, right? Don't do that. What I want you to do instead is cut it in the center, leave the two ends on, because those are going to be our handles so that we don't grate our fingertips off, okay, when we're grating this thing. When it gets down to the end, right, if you already cut that off, then what are you grabbing onto? So keep that end on with, you know, with the little stem and the bit. Let's grate our cucumber, shall we? And I'll show you what to do next with this. Everybody do that with your cucumber. Remember you didn't cut off the end to it and just grate it. And you'll notice that we're using the whole cucumber, we're not peeling it. We're not peeling it because the skin is the most nutritious part. And by not peeling it, we get light green and dark green. We get more presentation, more health, more flavor then if you peeled it. So just grate it completely whole with the standard cheese grater. And it gets a nice little bits in there. And you might think, wow, one whole large English cucumber to only 500 grams of yogurt. That's a lot of cucumber. Absolutely. This is a cucumber dip. That's what a tzatziki is. So you want to have it just screaming full of cucumber flavor. Now with the yogurt, you can choose anything you like because we're squeezing the liquid out of the cucumber. It doesn't really matter what yogurt you chose as long as it's plain. This is not the time for your strawberry or your vanilla yogurt, folks, just a plain yogurt. But if you want to go Greek because it's thicker, that's ideal because it's a dip or something higher fat because it's a nice luscious dip. Fantastic. Normally I would choose something like a 10 or 12% fat, but all I could find at the store today for some reason was 2% Greek yogurt. So I bought it because it's at least Greek, it's going to be thick, but higher fat is obviously better flavor, better texture, and you're just going to enjoy it more. Is it better for you? Well, obviously not, but hey, everything in moderation. You're going to see sitting there eating a whole tub of tzatziki every single day of 12% milk fat. But even if you do, that's a lot lower fat than using whipping cream at 35% milk fat. So man, everything in moderation, right? And you got to watch your perspective on everything. Don't be killing yourself on the 0% fat yogurt all the time. Goodness, life's too short for that. All right, I'm almost done my second half of cucumber. And I'm going to show you how much liquid comes out of this. Let's get this. And notice when I clean off the grater, I clean off opposite direction. So I'm not grating my fingers. And then I just grab the stuff from the inside. And I want to show you literally how much liquid comes off of this cucumber. So grab a kitchen towel, hopefully one that you don't have a, like a heavy fabric softener on. You don't want your tzatziki to taste spring fresh or, oh, wow, this one tastes like lavender and vanilla. <laughs> we don't want that, okay? So I'm using a green one just in case it stains it, but it's, it's all good. Put my cucumber on my towel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze it back over this bowl so I can capture the liquid and show you what's going on here. All right. Watch, watch this. And how much liquid comes out of here is just insane. So again, I'm going to waste 24 hours of my life waiting for my yogurt to drain just to add all this liquid back in. No, thank you. It's crazy, man. Don't believe all this stuff you see online. It's nuts. All right. Squeeze a little bit more. Just 
get your frustrations out on that cucumber, all right? Watch this. Here, I'll get a little glass here. Watch this. Look at that. That's nuts. That amount of juice, cucumber water, whatever, from one cucumber. Look at that. You could go down the street and sell that to your neighborhood spa if you want to do. All right, now let me show you. Let me take that cucumber and I'll show you how dry it is. Look at this. It's like a big ball of cucumber going in there now. Take the time to get all these little bits off your towel. Because if you throw this towel in your laundry, the last thing you want to have happen is you find these little cucumber bits stuck to your shorts and stuff, right? <laughs> I don't want that. So I'll make sure that towel is mostly cleaned off. And that's our first two ingredients. Our yogurt, 500 grams of plain yogurt and one long English cucumber grated and squeezed. Let's move on down the list. Let's go to our next ingredient, the garlic. I need to talk to you about the garlic. So it says three to four cloves, not 34, three to four cloves. I have three, depending on the size of them. And it also depends on your tolerance to raw garlic. Because remember, this is a dip. We're not cooking this at all. So as it sits, it's going to get stronger. Here's the thing. This recipe makes three cups that you can, you know, dip with pita or, or whatever. Use it in whatever application you want. This, this dip is so good, you can put it on an old shoe, it's going to taste good. <laughs> but what's going to happen as it sits in the fridge, that raw garlic flavor is going to increase and get stronger. So you have to ask yourself two very important things. One, do I like to smell like raw garlic? Great. Use four. Because, man, as it's just going to get stronger. If you don't like to smell like raw garlic, then use three. If you really don't like it, then maybe use two. Because it is going to be a little bit in your face. Not so much you're going to hate it, but it's there. I just want to tell you that because it is raw. Because it is raw, we're doing crushed. So I want you, this is a perfect application to pull out your garlic press. We have fine little bits. The last thing you want to do is have these big chunks of raw garlic and you bite into it. Like, ah, I got a big chunk of that bite of tzatziki. You don't want to do that. So as fine as possible. So garlic press for sure. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to cut off, as you know, these hard bits of the garlic cloves. We always do that. Cut those off. One, two, three. And one, two, three, four, if you're doing the four. If your cloves are really big, hey, just go three cloves. If they're smaller, go four. You know, if they're huge, gi ginormous, as my daughter likes to say, then man, go like two. I, I don't know. You just got to play it by ear. Everybody's tastes are different. Knock those skins off. And I'm going to get that garlic press happening here. Come on, this one's struggling. Okay, here we go. Let me grab my garlic press. And as you know... I don't like to press it on the board, then we lose some of the juice on the board or whatever. So I'm going to press it right into the container with the cucumber and the yogurt. So load up your garlic press, press it right in there. This contains 100% of the flesh and the juice into the recipe where you want it. And then just give it a little haircut here. Great. And then the Xylus garlic press, which is what I like to use, the Xylus brand comes with a little plunger that I can get 100% of the flesh out and get that all in there. And we're gonna move on to the next ingredient. You guys are ready. So I had a little problem shopping. I, I couldn't find my high fat yogurt. Guess what else I couldn't find? I couldn't find fresh dill. I went to three stores, no fresh dill. Come on folks, like I got a class to teach here. You uh, cut it down by a third and do it the day before. <laughs> ah, there you go. So here's what we're going to do. If you haven't got fresh, if you haven't got fresh herbs of any kind, okay, and the recipe calls for fresh, yeah, and you have to use dry, Sarah said it right there, you cut it down by a third, okay? So I have, instead of a tablespoon of chopped fresh dill, which I want you guys to start working on now, get your fresh dill out, chop it really fine, then measure a tablespoon after it's chopped really fine. I got dry, what I got to go with, right? And so I go a teaspoon, because there's three teaspoons in a tablespoon. We call for a tablespoon of fresh dill. So I have to use one third, which is one teaspoon of dry. And that sometimes that confuses people because they think, well, doesn't fresh have more flavor? It has a different flavor because the essential oils are intact. This has no essential oils left. But when this rehydrates, it's going to have the same amount of dill flavor as one tablespoon, three times as much. So I'm just going to add this in. The only other thing we have to keep in mind is that dry dill, as Sarah mentioned as well, needs some time to rehydrate. 
So this is another reason why we're doing this first. So I can put mine in the fridge, let it get happy, happy in there and start rehydrating and releasing its flavor. If you just put it in and taste it, you're not gonna taste that dill as much as you should because it's dry, it needs that time, right? The next ingredient, really simple, one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. I mean, a lot of Greek cooking has extra virgin olive oil in it, so we're just gonna add that. It gives a little extra, little punch of flavor and some richness to this, okay? Then comes the salt and pepper to taste. We're gonna cover this. Right away, you have to realize, looking at the ingredient list, we didn't put any salt or any pepper at all in yet at all. There's nothing salty in there. It's going to need some salt. So take your shaker or whatever, give it a good shake of salt. Don't put too much because you can always add more later. And we're going to taste this and do that. Put some pepper, lots of good grinds of pepper till your hand falls off, all right? Maybe not quite that far. And then get a utensil to stir this together and just bring it all together, okay? I put this in the clear glass measure so you guys could see it really, really well. And get it all together. You want that garlic to be fully distributed, obviously the cucumber, but that garlic is the most potent flavor in this whole mix. You're really going to want to get that through. And get a tasting spoon or two standing by because we're going to taste it and we're going to going to adjust it. Now, here's the thing. Maybe... You don't know how much salt to add because like, I don't want to ruin it, right? Then you're going to taste it and then just add a little bit more salt. Stir it around and see what it does. Don't add too much again because you can't take it out. We're just seasoning to taste. So I'm going to grab a spoon. It's good. I'm just going to add a bit more. And whenever you re-season something, you need to retaste it to see if you're there. But I also want you to take note, the flavor change. So when you're tasting it, really focus on that. What did that do? How did it change it? And try and keep that in your memory of how that works. But what we're doing is we're trying to increase the communication we have from our taste buds to our brain by doing this and really focusing on the changes that it makes. Let me grab another spoon here. And it just, in all, it's teaching you how to be a better home chef. Oh yeah. So just with that extra bit of salt, the flavor from the cucumbers are coming out. Oh, and when I swallow it, the flavor from the garlic is really starting to shine now too. So I could add a little bit more if I wanted to, but I'm happy with the flavor that that's representing. I can't taste the dill because my dill is dry. So it needs some time for that part to come out, but everything else is in check. So that's the other thing you have to focus on. If you are doing the dry dill, remember you're not tasting for that. I don't want you to think, oh, it needs more salt because I can't taste the dill. If you can taste that garlic coming through when you swallow it, you can taste the cucumber, you're good. The dill will come out in time. If you use fresh, you'll be able to taste that dill right away, okay? Okay.